Hey, 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 everybody, it's Peter here from Strong Healthy Women and welcome to Sunday Reflections. So we are here talking about wellbeing TV that we have been running all week this week and the topic has been workouts are just a screen away. So I'm pretty excited today to introduce you to Sue. G'day, Sue, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Hello, everyone. And Sally Ann. Hey, Sal, how are you going today? Good, thank you. Morning, Sue and Peter. How are you both? Good. Oh, very good. Very, very good. Very good for a Sunday. Do you know, um, it's been an interesting week this week because we were talking about working out in a virtual studio, you know, so just having that workout on the screen like we are today. We're here on the screen chatting with you. And we talked about I, I, the emotional aspect of it, the physical aspect of it. Uh, I gave everybody a sneak peek into the bedroom that got turned into a studio in my house. And we talked about like the space that you might need in order to work out at home as well too, because sometimes we think we need a lot of space. So why don't we start with you, Sue, because you actually started working out with us online over 12 months ago before you actually got all your certifications in fitness and became a trainer with us. So why don't you tell us about where you work out and how much space you use and how that works for you? Okay. Well, first of all, that myth about needing a whole gym size room, um, I remember I was I had a PT once and she we were going away I think we were going on a cruise and she said well you can still do it in your cabin and I said well you can't Ooh. swing a cat there and she said well no I can give you a whole set of I can give you a workout that you can do in your in a in the cabin on the ship and from then on yeah. I realized that yeah you don't need much space you need your mat really so for me Ooh. I I have a second bedroom that um is bit of a junk room really so I just when I was working, <laughs> when I was working out first of all I was um, just uh, not working out in the virtual studio but I was one of the onliners and um, I just put my little phone on um, with your video go into that bedroom I have my mat and my weights or whatever else I needed and there was my workout uh, or I can do it in the lounge room if I want to put it on the big screen TV, which is what I do these days. But yeah, you don't need much space at all. Just the, the just the size mm. of the mat, and and that's the good thing too, because a lot of people think, oh, I've got to do a home gym and all of that. You don't. And with the exercises that I was doing with you, um, I needed my weight. I needed maybe a resistance band sometimes and a mat and that was it. So that's what I mm. love about it, not encroaching or having to move all the furniture out of the way and all that sort of thing. You could just, well, in the second bedroom, you can just leave the mat there if you're not using it. But, um, yeah, so that's how I worked out. And even now in the virtual studio where I'm, uh, taking the classes it's in the lounge area uh, because I put it on the big screen tv so I can see everyone but again it's only a very small section I don't have to move anything around um, so that's Ooh. what I love about it yeah yeah so you got any comments about that I'm the same. I've got, you know, a, just a little area at the end of my office because my office is rectangle. Um, so I've got an area at the end of my office. And, you know, as Sue was saying, you don't need a lot of lot of room, you know. You need to be able to step one step sideways, one step back, one step forward, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, like Sue mentioned, having to have weights. And, of course, you know, we use weights because we are all about strength training and flexibility training. Um, but even so, if you don't have weights available, yeah. you can still find that that resistance in another format. So, mm -hmm. for example, you could go to your pantry. There's lots of things you can use in the pantry. And in the first instance, we actually saw ladies doing that, you know, with their bottles, um, yeah. their milk bottles that have been emptied. You know, they'd fill them up with sand. 
Um, we saw ladies using uh, backpacks because that was one of the suggestions, you know, was to put, you know, a bit of gear into the backpack and you could either wear it on your back or you could hold it by the handle at the front when we were doing like goblet squats and things like that. So yes, you can just simply use uh, a, a equipment that you actually have in the household. The hmm. other thing is you don't need to work out inside your house, you can work out outside your house. So if you prefer to be outdoors, and I know that originally that's how I started outdoors. And uh, what I found was the mosquitoes were just horrendous. They were attacking me that whole time. So that soon became a, um, a faded memory. So, <laughs> so I moved well, indoors so not to get bitten. Yeah, the other thing too is um, we live in Queensland, hot and humid summers. So, you know, I, yeah. as much as I, I do enjoy working outside as well, but it just gets too hot. So you can be indoors and put the air conditioning on and, um, you know, you're in comfort there. Mm. Yes, yeah, totally. The other aspect of it is motivation. And of course, you know, you both know, and for anybody who's listened before, they will have heard me say this, motivation is the magical, mystical unicorn. Um, it's something that comes and goes for all of us. And I think if you don't have the motivation to work out online, you probably don't have the motivation to work out face to face either. So um, it is just one of those things. So I don't like to say that it's it's an excuse, but it, it, it is a blockage that a lot of us use to, to not work out. It is that I am not motivated. Well, so, and that's where we start to think about, well, why is this important to you? So if you really want to change up your health and fitness, what is important to you? So what is currently taking up more time than what you, what you have right now to spend even just five minutes doing a workout? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk to that a little bit, Sal? I was, <laughs> I was just thinking about the whole... Um, you know, I prefer working out face to face and those sort of things. But with the way the, you know, the situation has changed at the moment, and I'm thinking, just jump in your car, drive around the block, drive back home, and pretend you're going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Sal. Love it. <laughs> you know, they get you in your car, you're tricking your mind. I'm going to the gym and rock up at home, into your studio, into mm. your workout. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I think it may be more than that, though. It's not just the, the I'm getting in my car and going <laughs> somewhere. I think it's the fact that you've actually got a person next to you. <laughs> but you still have a person next to you in the virtual studio as well, too. So uh, yes. they just don't happen to be in your same physical space, that's all. No. Uh, and uh, that, that, you know, that's one of the big bonuses um, is that because you're not in that physical space, you still have that person beside you, but, you know, there's not a lot of chatty chatting happening during your workout mm. in a virtual studio because you're focused on what you're doing. You know, you're not having yeah. those distractions, which is wonderful. Mm. Mm. I, th I think for me, I, as I, as you know, I started as an onliner, which was good um, because you give us all the information and then we take it away and we do it ourselves. But I also found that um, some days I probably didn't push myself as hard as what I should have and I'd probably <laughs> go, oh, yeah, I've done five sets or whatever, and but not really feel that I've given it my all. And, and we all get that way and and life gets in the way. But I think for me, transferring over to the virtual studio, even before I started, you know, being an instructor, I transferred over to that. And I still do that with you. If I'm not taking the class, I'm doing it mm. with everyone because that's my workout. And I'm just enjoying the connection with everyone and actually that it's at a set time because I know mm. that I've got three different options of time on three days a week and I just put that aside and I know, well, I'm going to my class and I just get out of bed, get dressed, turn on the laptop and I'm in class and I've got that and I feel that for me the virtual studio was another step up to keeping me on track because I'm doing it with everyone. Mm. 
and you're both looking at us so we can't escape sort of cheating <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not doing that extra couple of push-ups at the end or whatever so for me that was that's what I really enjoy about it yeah it's interesting you say that because I know that you know it, it's it, it really is the online world um, whether that be that you work out with us in the virtual studio or whether you opt for doing the online component yeah. Uh, that that choice is yours and the thing is that with the onliners we're still keeping them accountable as well too yeah. so it's like yeah. he, um, every single workout when when we're expecting them to work out it's like okay it's check-in time yeah. how many sets did you do how many reps or times or, or whatever it was so they know that it's a ladder day or it's a rep day or it's a time day and so when we see that workout come through and they've gone, okay, I've done three sets of 20 and we know that we did eight sets of, you know, 10 and we know the capabilities of the ladies who are choosing to do it online, then we will go, here's your challenge for next yeah, session. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So we will that way try and push them that little bit more and challenge them that little bit more to keep working out that little bit harder and look mm. we understand that some days you get out of bed and you don't feel as energized as other days um, and that's okay too as long as you put in the effort that you can put in right then and there that's what's important is putting mm. in the effort Mm. But I like the options. Sorry, Sal. I just wanted to say I like the options. The online, you can do it whenever you want to. So that can, yes. you know, if you can't make the virtual studio, you've still got the video, you've still got that backup and support. So I like that as well. It's just that I've transferred mm -hmm. to a different, to the other, to the virtual studio. But but as yes. far as an online workout goes, yeah, you still really can't get away with it because we've got to check in and, and all the things that you said, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the thing too as, you know, being trainers, and we know how long a fit flex session goes. So if we're getting told, oh, okay, I did three sets of 20 reps, we know exactly how long it took to do three sets of 20 reps. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it wouldn't have been that 20-minute. Um, high intensity. You know, high intensity. intensity. Yeah. Effort yeah. That has mm -hmm. been put in, yeah. So, you mm -hmm. know, as Peter said, the next step is, okay, well, your challenge next week is this. Mm -hmm. Mm. So from um, an emotional perspective, you know, convincing yourself that working out online is something that you can do, what do you think um, is really important to understand? What do you think the process is? So do you want to start us off on that, Sue? Well, I think it's having an open mind and being uh, accepting mm -hmm. that it's a different way uh, and then I mean, we've all had to go through this with COVID, you know, where we, we couldn't really go out or do anything. So it's becoming familiar with the technology because it, it's not really rocket science, but it could look like that if you don't know how to use it. But once you've got yeah. that, I think it's just overcoming that fear of, oh, am I really going to get a workout or whatever? But for me... Once I've got it all up and going, I feel like I'm there. You know, I feel that, that I'm in the, mm. in the, yeah, and I'm talking virtual studio here, but I feel like I'm in the, actually in the class. So for, uh, for me, I, I don't really have that difficulty of thinking that I'm, I'm not communicating with other people or that sort of thing. But, but I think the main stumbling block would be not understanding the technology. But once you get into that, mm. it's the mm -hmm. same as if you went to a gym or, or wherever. And the same for online, you provide the video. So you could just put that up on the screen and just working out to yeah. that. And it's keeping you going. You've got your voice there saying, come on, this is what you're doing. So, um, you know, for me, I think it's just trying to understand what the setup is. And once you've got it all set up, it's set and forget really you just click the button and you're there yeah 
Well, one of the things that we actually noticed was that when we first introduced the virtual studio back in March, that uh, everybody was coming on, you know, 20 minutes to half an hour earlier. Now it's like, you know, running in at the last minute to about five, seven minutes out type of thing. So they've all got used to where do I have to put my camera? Where do I need to stand? So everybody's got used to that setup. So they're doing it a lot quicker now. So it's actually even taking up less time than it used to take um, in the past. So if you think about it, um, if you think about it, then what's Sorry. actually happening? <laughs> oh, well, I've got a distraction at my window too because um, Paul's riding around with one grandson on the motorbike and they're, they're yelling out at me. So sorry about that, everyone. So, um, yeah, what was I saying there? About the setting up of the time, like taking less time. Yeah, the time up. factor. And that is that is a, actually a big benefit to actually working out at home is that you actually are saving time because as you alluded to, so you would probably have to get in the car and drive somewhere to go to a workout, whereas now it's like roll out of bed or get home from work and you're straight into your workout. So time is a big factor. And I know for many of us we say that I'm such a busy person, I don't have the time, but the reality is that when it's in an online environment, you actually can find the time. And as I keep coming back to Five minutes, 10 minutes is all it takes. You know, it is just taking that first step forward is what's important. Mm. You got anything to add on that stuff? I think sometimes our blockages with, you know, am I going to look stupid? It's a virtual studio. So everyone's, the focus mm. is going to be me because I'm on a big screen and everyone's going to be looking at me. Um, you know, when in reality, you know, some of our um, classes, yes, we are having, you know, 15, 20 women in there in our virtual studio, um, but the focus is on the trainer and you are still not getting lost amongst those women because you then have that second trainer watching everybody very closely. So, you know, if you have that fear, well, what if I don't know how to do an exercise? What if this is going to happen? What if that mm. is going to happen? You've got that second trainer that's going to talk you through um, what's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, that is actually a good point as well too. I think also what um, what we should probably highlight is that in our hub, which is, you know, the, the member portal that, that backs up behind the, the studio, is a follow-along workout, and Sue alluded to this earlier. So you get that follow-along workout every single week. So here's your workout. This is what we're going to be doing. Um, but also behind that is the how-to um, video as well too. So we give you the break it down. This is how you do the workout. But not only that, it's like, okay, if you can't do this, then here's your alternative to this particular exercise that we might be doing. Because, look, we know that in working with women who are, you know, mid-age and beyond, there is a lot of wear and tear on our body. We have aches and pains, you know, degeneration in our spine, sore knees, you know, um, cartilage wear down, all of those types of things. So we know that we're going to encounter somebody who can't do something. So we preempt that and go, well, here's the variation for that and this is how you go about doing it. Mm. And the other thing I think is if you were going to a group class, um, a lot of times you just have to pick it up as you go along. Whereas with that yes. video at the beginning of the week, um, or we get it on a Friday, I think, um, you've got time to have a look at it and have a look at the how-tos, have a look at the the alternatives, and then that way you mm. can um, really get the most out of your session because you're not sort of, you know what you're doing rather than trying to be six steps behind the, yeah. the, the 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 instructor who's going along and not really stopping to see who's keeping up. So that's what I think is a, a good good part as well. 
Yes, mm. and a lot of the clients, you know, you know, when you come into the studio on a Monday, and a lot of the clients, because they've already uh, have been into the portal, seen what the workout is, seen what the alternatives are, um, you know, we find that they just, if they need that alternative, yeah. that's what they're doing, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no, they don't have to re be reminded, okay, Sue, so, well, we know you have this issue, so this is your alternative. Because you've watched uh, that video and that how-to yeah. and the alternatives, you'll go, right, yeah. this, is, this exercise is next, so this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah. The other thing that I actually just thought of, I just scribbled it down so I didn't forget, um, was that we also have the exercise guide in in the hub as well too. So for those people who like to physically read, and that's the important thing here is that we ca we're catering for different learning styles. Now I think this can also be a challenge when you're going from a face to face environment to a virtual studio or an online um, workout because you're used to someone coming up and you know physically correcting you whereas now you really do need to engage um, your listening skills a lot more as to what is being said and so I know from a face-to-face -face environment there would all what would happen was someone would look at the person in front of them you know you'd see the one person change and then everybody else had changed behind them so they were using that person as as the follow along mm -hmm. and so what is happening there is if we're not using our listening skills then we're not um committed and engaged to it and we're not engaging the cognitive aspect of that workout as well too so i personally think that the cognitive relationship to the workout has improved greatly because we are having to concentrate more and so and that as i said that can be a stumbling block for everybody as well or for uh, some people in the fact that they do need to concentrate they do need to listen more um, and I know this week in so, so we do a challenge every week and I know that our challenge each this week is here's how to improve a particular exercise but here's how to cognitively improve it as well too so we might have them doing a step out but they're alternating different ways with their arms so they're really physically and mentally engaging in the workout as well. Mm. Mm. And I think that's why we've seen like a 25% increase in people's strength. Oh, totally. Because, you know, they, they don't have those distractions. Um, they, are, they are involved in their workouts. You know, sometimes if you're mm. in that face-to-face, -face, you're not involved in your workout yeah. because you can just use your eyes, as you said, and... You know, watch the person in front of you to guide you along. You know, so you're missing out on three, four, five reps if we're doing a timed workout. You know, instead of doing 30 seconds of um, work, you're doing 15 seconds of work. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's you know, in the virtual studio, you you, you know, the increase in the strength has been incredible. But the other thing too is what Peter alluded to with that mind-body collection. You could be watching the person in front and they're doing it incorrect, the exercise incorrectly, okay. which of course then they, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, the risk of injury. Whereas if you've mm -hmm. looked at the, the information that we're given before the start and whilst we're going through the session, you know, the mm -hmm. trainers are pointing out the, the correct form and that sort of thing, you really learning to connect your mind and body and as you say Sally be more present in your um, workout rather than sort of looking at what everyone else is doing you're actually getting more of a benefit because you're you're more you've, you've learned how to do it properly and, you, and you're executing it properly and of course then that's going to be better for your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah look I think um, safety particularly has been could be a concern for people as well too because they're not in that that physical space with someone but you know as you said there we have two sets of eyes on you before a training session we know whether uh, you're living alone and if something should happen 
you know, what we can do from our perspective. We've asked their ladies to make sure that they've got their, you know, first aid kits available, all those types of things. So we are thinking about the fact that you are at home and you are working out. And in some cases you are alone as well too. So, um, and that could be scary for, for someone to, to think, well, you know, if I, if I was to get injured, what is going to happen? Like, what will be the process? Um, and I know from our perspective, we have that covered off. We have those guidelines that we follow through. Hmm. And going back to, you know, at the beginning when we we're talking about the, uh, you know, that space that you need, you know, for your, for your hmm. workout. I know one of the things that, you know, was covered off was safety in the space that you work out, you know, making yeah. sure that yeah. there's no trip hazards or, you know, that, um, you know, the fan's too low and that, you know, that you've got enough airflow. So it's not just a matter of, um, you know, just putting in your virtual studio and going. I know there's been times there when we've, you know, said to the ladies, just move your weights out the way because we can see that something may happen. They may trip over them. Um, yeah. You know, some of our clients might have stopped, you know, and we're checking on them. Is everything okay? Give us a thumbs up. Talk to us. Come up to the screen. Mm. Tell us what's happening, you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The other thing is, um, and, and this is a big thing right now, is the germs. I mean, you only have to have a look at what's going on in our own country. We're here in Australia um, and overseas, you know, the, the, the spread of this uh, pandemic is, you know, going upwards and it's continually doing that. And you know, for us to actually physically feel safe and know that we're in a an environment where it, it's clean and we have control over that when we're actually working out at home. So, and that's not to say that going to a gym is, is not uh, physically safe um, and that it's not clean because I know that you know, they're doing everything that they can do in those physical spaces to keep it clean. But they're also reliant on other people. And we know that humans are human and that they will, you know, shortcut things. I mean, gee, I'm the one part wonder when it comes to cooking. If it says I've got to use three pots, I'm going to use one and I'm going to find a shortcut. So, you know, that human nature comes in where we go, oh, okay, well, just a little hit in the miss, you know, clean will do. But the reality is the little hit the miss is, is not going to do right now. We have to do the whole cleaning thing. So mm. germs is another factor that can. The thing too is, you know, Go on. when you're in that physical space, um, you know, can you really trust people to be responsible, you know, if, if they're not well? Are they okay? Well, I'm not going mm. to go to that physical space of a gym. Um, and you know, from what you know, what you see out in the world, you know, people can't be trusted to be doing the right thing. Mm. Mm. Or they forget. Mm. You know, must, yes, I know myself. Yeah. It's like with this social distancing, you you sort of forget about it if you're out in the world, and you have to pull yourself mm. up and go, oh, hang on a minute you know, a bit yeah. too close there. So. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think people are intentionally doing the wrong things. Um, I, I think that we're just, you know, because that we might be in a space that you can't social distance, as an example, or, yeah, as, as you said, Sue, you might go, oh, I just need that, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're brushing past somebody else as well too. So, you know, we forget about those things. So... It, it, you know, it definitely is a big factor um, to consider, particularly, you know, that we are classified as, you know, the, the vulnerable, a lot of us in the age group that we are as well. And so that safety aspect um, is, is very, very important. It's really, really important to us mm, as mm. Strong Healthy Women. So and it I should think be first that, and foremost. That's probably a real struggle and an obstacle for a lot of our ladies because they don't believe that they're in that in that vulnerable group. 
Um, no. You know, I know myself for my mum, I look at my mum and she's 74, you know, but, you know, in her head and in her body as in being physically capable of doing stuff, mm. you know, she's like 60. Mm. You know, I know that's yeah. still that vulnerable age group, but you, I'm not looking at her and going, oh, my goodness, mum, you shouldn't be out doing this. It's like, oh, while you're out, can you get me? <laughs> um you know, and, and it shouldn't be like that because she's in that vulnerable age group and even she says, you know, I'm not old. I shouldn't be in that group. But her birth certificate says yeah. something different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. So, yeah, there's been a lot of stuff there we've covered off, ladies, but I, I think the most important thing is that, you know, there is for and against with anything that you're going to come up with in regards to you know whether you work out in a in a face-to-face -face environment or whether you work out in the online environment but what Bless we you. know about the online yeah, what we know about the online environment is that we are seeing greater results because people are focused on themselves we know that they are saving time. They're not as anxious sitting in traffic, traveling to to workouts as well too. Um, we know that that they are still physically able to connect with people as well too because, you know, in the studio we have the breakout rooms so that they can, you know, have a chat with different people before they get into their workout if they choose. And the other thing about it is that you can always invite one of your friends over to work out with you and you can actually do it with them in your physical space as well. So there are always options in regards to um, still connecting with other people as well. So, and I think that's important. So now, did we just lose me? No, no, no you're still there. No, I'm I'm still here. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. No. <laughs> I just saw something go oh, on my screen and I went, okay, I think I've just been lost. But no, I'm not lost. So, ladies, we have put a link up for you today uh, to check out uh, our FitFlex virtual studio. And we would love for you to invite you in for a free workout with us. So, if you would like to do that, all you need to do is just um, message us today below this post. And we will uh, send you the link to come in. We'll find out which session you want to come in. Uh, we'll send you uh, a little bit of a health forms because we want to know a little bit about you before you start joining us. And we can get you started and you can actually get to experience FitFlex online uh, before you make any type of commitment to actually changing to that online world as well too. So thanks for joining me today, Sel and Sue. A pleasure as always. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Thank you. Happy You're very Sunday, welcome. Everybody. Yes, happy Sunday, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. And we will be back uh, on Monday for our Talking Wellbeing TV, and we are talking about the muscle tears. So a little play on words there from the, the muscle tears. <laughs> the three muscle tears. Yes, that's the ones. So you'll have to tune in to find out what all that silliness is all about. So. Take care, everybody, and we will see you all on Monday. Bye for now. Bye, Sue. Bye. 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 Bye.